Hey guys, Michael here from MichaelSherlock.com. I want to talk to you today about Apple's Let's Talk iPhone event. Let's jump right into it. We were expecting a new iPhone model. I talked about my predictions yesterday. The iPhone 4S is what launched today. It's the same form factor as the current iPhone 4, except it has a lot of improvements on the inside. So first of all, it has that A5 dual-core CPU, but that also is a dual-core graphics engine as well. So graphics performances, they claim 7%, 7 times better with CPU performance at two times better than the A4 chip that is in the iPhone 4. With that improvement though, you still get eight hours of talk time. So Apple's is basically saying their battery life is still one of the best on the market. Smartphones always have that problem balancing power um, in ter with you know battery life. Apple has always been one of the better people in that, especially because the iPhone does not have user replaceable batteries and that has not changed. Um, in terms of per antenna performance, there's a uh, new design. It sort of looks exactly like the CDMA version of the iPhone 4. It has the four grooves for the antennas. Apparently, inside that stainless steel band, there's actually two antennas instead of one, like there was last time, and it can intelligently switch between them for the best call quality and connectivity. It's also a world phone, so GSM and CDMA uh, is the same exact phone, uh, it just depends on what carrier you're activated for. 14.4 megabits per second HSDPA download speeds. Competitors, Apple says, calls this 4G. It's not as fast as HSPA Plus that we've seen in some other phones, but 14.4 megabits per second downstream is twice as fast as what the iPhone 4 could handle, so we'll see improved performance with that. One of the other big things that they talked about was the new camera lens on the back. It's an 8 megapixel CMOS backlit sensor, which actually lets in about 73% more light than the iPhone 4. It also has an extremely wide lens, an aperture of f2.4, which if you know anything about photography, that's actually a very significant size. It lets in a lot of light which will definitely help with performance in low-light situations and, of course, in high-light situations as well. What's also cool is there's an Apple signal processor that they've developed, which actually works for face detection and also improves auto white balance by 26%. Has 1080p video capture with real-time image stabilization and real-time audio noise reduction. So essentially, Apple is trying to make this the best performance. They say this will be probably the best camera most cu customers that they have. Uh, it'll be the best camera that they have, as well as the best video camera that they've ever used. For some of us in the industry, some of us that are really tech buffs, it's not going to be the best because we have DSLRs and such. But for a lot of people, having 8 megapixel shots in your pocket, having 1080p video recording is much better than anything they've had before. The pre-orders are going to start on October 7th, and it's going to ship October 14th. It's going to come in black and white, 199 for 16 gigabyte, 299 for 32 gigabyte, and 399 for 64 gigabyte. So pretty pricey, but they finally offer that. That's going to be coming for AT&T, Verizon Wireless, and you guessed it, Sprint. Another prediction that I had that was correct. The iPhone 4 is going to, there's going to be an 8 gigabyte model that's going to sell for $99, and the iPhone 3GS is still kicking around. It's going to be free on contract. These are all contract price, by the way. It'll be free on contract probably just for GSM carriers because there was, never was a CDMA iPhone 3GS. But I think the biggest feature of the iPhone 4S is a software feature that you won't see being updated on other phones that Apple sells. Suri, the personal assistant, basically this is full voice commands, but it's not a predetermined list of commands that you can ask it. What, the way I interpret it as, when you speak it in, it analyzes your language and then determines what it is. So it's not restrictive commands. So you could say, do I need an umbrella today? And it'll check the weather, and if it's raining, it'll say yes. Conversely, you could just be very simple and say, what's the weather like? And it'll tell you high 70 and sunny. It all just works. You could also ask, how's the stock market today? Or find me a great restaurant near Stanford University. It doesn't matter what it is. The idea is that Surrey is very similar to what an actual assistant would be, and it can answer all those questions for you. Another really cool thing is it can actually, if you get a text message, and let's say you had your phone in your pocket, but you had a Bluetooth headset, you could just tap on that and say, uh, read the text message or read the message. Surrey will go ahead and read you the message, and then you can reply to it with voice commands, and then Surrey will speak it back to you to ensure that it's correct, and then it can send it all with voice commands. It's actually very, very cool. You can also make appointments to fit your schedule and set up reminders as well. What's also very cool is it, it integrates with Wikipedia and Wolfram Alpha. So you could go in, and if you're doing high school calculus, you could say, what is the derivative of x squared? And it'll go ahead and tell you the answer of 2x. It's very, very easy. 
Apple Apple makes this seem like it's just going to work right out of the box. If this can work as well as Apple has marketed it, i.e. it can really understand language and you don't have to dumb down your, your voice, then this will be an extremely cool feature. Right now, this will work with English, German, and French. They call it beta because more languages will be coming soon. Of course, the iPhone 4S will also ship with iOS 5. I'm still very excited for some of the features that we talked about in the past. The new notification manager, which is a significant, significant improvement over what we've seen before. Tab browsing, deep Twitter integration. Of course, wireless sync setup and backup with iCloud. You know, remember, we can download and re-download our music all over the air. Pictures taken on your iDevices will be synced up to the cloud and then synced to all of your other devices that connect. The same thing happens with documents, books, apps. Everything just works. It's something that you know, we should have seen from the beginning and it's something that other carriers, other phone manufacturers and other operating system manufacturers have started to adopt. But since Apple controls the entire marketplace, they really can integrate that much, much better. Of course, iTunes Match is still coming, so the same thing will happen with music uh, for free for 5 gigabytes with iCloud. Your music will be synced and streamed back and forth. If you want, don't want that, or you rather, I mean, you have music from other sources, i.e. you bought it, you bought the CDs, of course, that has to be where you got it from. Uh, you can pay $24.99 a year. That'll stream immediately, as they say, although... We'll see if it actually is a streaming service, but it'll upload to the cloud and you can go ahead from there. Another interesting feature that I mentioned yesterday, I was really good with these rumors, by the way. Family and friends, I think I called this Find My Friends or something in the rumor roundup. But essentially, you can locate your friends and family all on your iOS device. Wherever they are, you can see them on a map. And of course, you have privacy settings as well. There's also an interesting thing where you can temporarily allow your friends to see your location. So let's say, uh, you know, friends that live in a different state are coming to your house. They can share their location information with you. So if they get lost, you'll know, you can just pop right on your phone and know exactly where they are and exactly how to steer them in the right direction, which is pretty cool. That's going to be a free feature on iOS 5 and Mac OS 10 Lion, which is pretty cool iCloud and iOS 5 are going to drop on October 12th. Again, October 14th is the day iPhone 4S launches. And uh, that's going to launch for the iPhone 4, the 3GS, the iPad 2, and the iPod Touch 4G and 5G. So that's just pretty, pretty interesting thing there. Um, another app that they actually introduced, Cards, they kind of just glossed over this. I thought it was kind of interesting. It's a free app that you can download. There are some templates for little cards you can input pictures just that you have on your device and then for 299 in the United States or 499 internationally they can actually print out and send a card anywhere you want which is pretty cool you forget somebody's birthday's coming up Surrey reminds you that that birthday is coming up you pop right into cards make the card and it'll send it out and then it'll also send you push notifications saying that it's been delivered it's been shipped all that stuff and then that'll be pretty easy for you um, so the last thing that they mentioned at this event, they kind of just glossed over it, the new iPods. They're not really anything, you know, extraordinary. The iPod Nano and the iPod Touch were updated. They're very, very small updates. The iPod Nano basically gets a software bump, although I don't know if the old ones will get this new software. But instead of the grid of four icons, you can actually just have one big icon and just swipe back and forth, which makes it much easier to navigate because that multi-touch display is quite small in the Nano. Nike Plus works right out of the box which is interesting if you're into running. There are new clock faces because a lot of people use the iPod Nano, or a lot of people, tech buffs, would put them on their wrists as watches. So now there are 21, I believe, new clock faces uh, so that you're so that you can wear that. Uh, there's seven colors, eight gigabyte is gonna be 129, 16 gigabyte 149. That's actually available now, it'll ship today. The new iPod Touch is basically the old iPod Touch except it comes in white. There's a price drop on the low end, so 199 for 16 gigabyte, 299 for 32 gigabyte, and 399 for 64 gigabyte. And of course that'll be getting the iOS 5 update, so services like iMessage will work just fine. That base price drop, by the way, seems very much in line with the Kindle Fire because now the iPod Touch, the Kindle Fire are both at the same price point. So Apple can kind of position the Kindle Fire and the iPod Touch as competitors at the same price point as opposed to the Kindle Fire and the iPad with the iPad being a significantly more expensive option. It's just something to keep in mind. So I hope I glossed over those features very well. Of course, in the coming days and weeks, I'll have a lot more information coming for you on the new iPhone 4S. Love to hear your feedback in the comments section below. Is this worth updating to or is this just an incremental update and you'll be waiting till next year for the iPhone 5 with LTE? Love to hear your feedback in the comments section below guys. Apologize for my raspy voice again. I'm still sick. It's actually gotten a little bit worse so I probably should take it easy. But anyway guys, thanks for watching and have a nice day.